Hi, welcome back. In a previous video, I talked about poliomyelitis and the post-polio syndrome. If you didn't have time to check that out, the video is in the description below. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Ted. I'm a physical therapy student in Canada. And really, my goal is to bring theory into practice. In today's video, I am going to present you a case study about someone who has post-polio syndrome. And I will discuss about what I would do with this patient in the clinic. From the interview, we have a female patient. She's 35 years of age. She had poliomyelitis when she was four, and that was when she was living in Senegal. She had a severe form of uh, polio, which was paralytic. Uh, she had pretty big complications, trouble breathing. She did physical therapy for a long time. I think it was intense physio for one year. And then for the following two years, she had to keep doing exercises. She said that after the acute infection of polio, she suffered from severe muscle paralysis, especially in the left leg. And uh, since that time, she uh, was walking with uh, crouches, the ones that come through your axillary area here. Four years ago, she immigrated to Canada and now she, she comes to consult us in outpatient clinic, the outpatient physiotherapy clinic. Um, she's saying that for the past two years, she's been noticing extreme fatigue and also weakness in, her, uh, in, in both of her legs. And six months ago, she, uh, she fell. She tried to reach something high up and uh, ended up falling. She fractured her ankle. She had a bimalleolar uh, ankle fracture, which she had to be operated for. She, she had internal fixations for that. So following that operation, she had to uh, stay at the hospital for six weeks and she was completely immobilized. Her ankle was completely immobilized. And so she's consulting us at the outpatient clinic for the first time uh, ever, really. So I'm not gonna go over the whole, uh, the, the, the entire evaluation here, but what is important to know is that she has um, hypotonia of her uh, in inferior limbs. Uh, she has extreme uh, muscle weakness in both of her legs, especially the left one. And when I say muscle weakness, it's, it's, it's really sub-gravity level. So on a scale of, of five of muscle strength, it doesn't go up three out of five. As far as her core muscles go, it's also very weak, not more than a three out of five. Postural control is not so great. Uh, she has trouble staying on one leg, obviously, right? For more than, more than a few seconds with her, with her eyes closed. Uh, so at mid stance, she has hyperextension of the knee uh, on the left side. We also noticed that her um, that her level of energy was very low during all the all the all the assessment, all the objective assessment. Very tired, gets tired easily. So having that in mind, we have to decide what we prioritize. I would target two things mainly. First, I would target decreased motor function, especially here I'm, I'm referring to the lack of strength in her legs, especially the left one. I would also target extreme fatigue. And this one is important just because fatigue is something that is that comes back regularly with people with PPS. Um, there, there, there's right now, there's a huge kind of paradigm shift where at first, when you contracted polio, you had like a very rigid training program with resistance, endurance training, uh, uh, strength training with weights. And that was all good, you know, to recuperate your, your, your strength. But they, 
they found out that if you do the same thing with people with PPS, their condition actually deteriorates uh, pretty drastically. And so now we have to kind of change their mentality. They were used to a certain way of doing things and now, we, now we're telling them to, you have to focus on energy conservation, adapt your environment, and trying more to manage your symptoms rather than, than trying to recuperate. Now, in terms of prognosis, this is kind of like a gray area because nobody, no one patient evolves in the same way. And it, it really, prognosis depends on, the, on how bad you had polio before. It depends also on what you did after, were you active or not. So it's, it has so many factors that it's very hard to pinpoint exactly where the patient is, is going in which direction. But I'm going to be optimistic with this one just because I think that the weakness in her lower limbs, I think, is not so much related to PPS. Rather, I believe it's because of the six weeks immobilization uh, following the surgery at her uh, ankle. I think that really kind of disabled her in the in the short term. So I'm going to be I'm going to be optimistic and say that she's going to be able to walk with crutches. I will go with Canadian crutches uh, within within three months, right? Um, so what do you actually do with this patient? Well, there there are a few things to consider just before thinking about this. Is that there there's no cure for PPS. Right now, there's no pharmaceutical treatment whatsoever for that. Emphasis should be made more on managing the symptoms. So, like I said before, try to educate the patient on energy conservation techniques. So, what do we actually do? In the best case scenario, I think here, what would be really nice is, have, is to put the patient on a rowing machine. And the, the, the reasoning behind that is because her, her upper arms are really strong and her core muscles need to be worked out because they're weak and her lower limbs. Now a rowing machine, you mainly use your trunk and your arms. And so I would kind of use that to strengthen her, her legs and her core. And I would put it on a very, very low intensity to not fatigue the patient. Um, and it's, it's so important to, as soon as she has pain, you stop it and you try to decrease the, the intensity. So it, this is really important because as soon as you work out in the pain level, uh, that, that can be very, very bad for, the, for prognosis of, of her, her condition. Another thing I would do is to prescribe um, something we called uh, a knee ankle foot orthesis. I'll show you what I mean. So here, as you can see, this type of orthesis almost covers the entire leg. It goes from the thigh to the knee to the ankle. And these days uh, they are custom made for the patient's gait, type of gait. So in the, in the case of our patient here, on the mid stance, there, there's a, like a drop lock mechanism at the knee, which will prevent the hyperextension. So overall, it's going to increase her stability. Okay, so here you go. Those are my impressions about this patient. I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next one.